What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. And in this video, guys, we're going to be talking about Season 4. We're going to be talking about characters, we're going to be talking about character balance, we're going to be talking about extra features, all of that kind of stuff. Now, in the meantime, I have some Power Rangers matches going on for you in the background. Um, I'm going to be using my Zeal Gold, Ranger Slayer, and Scorpina team. Now, unlike my normal team setup, I do actually have Scorpina up front first because I'm trying to get more practice with Scorpina neutral and block strings and sort of things like that. Um, I actually did sign up for Frosty Faustings, so I'm actually trying to get some practice in uh, this week so I can actually be, you know, competent with my teams and so I can, you know, show up and do decently and do some swag combos so practicing with scorpina practicing like my tagging you know all that kind of stuff so between here and in training mode and whatnot um anyway so <clears throat> enough about these matches i hope you guys enjoy them let's go ahead and start getting into season four talk now the first thing you guys might be thinking about is like whoa parker lad kind of late on this one right i mean you know they already had the character poll and everything and people have been talking about it you know for a little bit and to that i would say you know what I do not care. I have my opinions now and I am ready to express them. Back when, you know, a lot of the season four talk was going on and the polls were going on and stuff like that, I honestly did not really have an opinion of what I wanted out of season four. I was just like, uh, what I want out of season four is for season four to exist. Um, outside of that, I didn't, I didn't really care because, you know, I'm more of an old school Power Rangers fan. I stopped watching Power Rangers, like, after Turbo. The reason why I got into this game is because, like, I was like, oh, Power Rangers, I remember what that is, and they're doing cool stuff. All right, let's go. I can get behind this. And I say all that to say that all I ever wanted out of this game was them to put in characters and make them look cool and make their gameplay fun. And I think that they've done a really good job with that thus far. There isn't one character that I don't enjoy in some capacity uh, playing. But, you know, since then, um, my opinions have actually changed a little bit, and I will actually tell you why. So, earlier this month, after the holidays, of course, like, you know, I came down with the Rona, and so I wasn't playing the game. But one thing I was doing was I was YouTubing, and one of the YouTubers that I was watching was a content creator named The Disney Brain. Now, among other things that The Disney Brain does is he does a very thorough and concise breakdown of Power Rangers characters, Power Rangers seasons, and stuff like that. And I started watching a bunch of these because my, you know, Battle for the Grid buddies were like, yo, Parker Lad, uh, SPD, Time Force, In Space, you should check these out and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I, I've kind of, I've had my time with like Power Rangers. I don't know if I'll ever actually get back into the show and, and you know, stuff like that. But, you know, Hearing my friends talk about that and then, you know, having this guy who basically breaks down like, you know, why the seasons were good and stuff like that gave me a lot of perspective. I'm actually going to be leaving a link to the Disney Brains channel in one of his videos. So you guys, you know, who maybe don't know a whole lot about the other Power Rangers seasons, maybe you can check that out and, you know, you can learn some uh, pretty cool stuff from that as well. Um... But because of that, I actually have, you know, some things to say about as far as like characters that I want. And I'm actually going to be talking about one character um, specifically, but we'll get into that a little bit later. <clears throat> So the first thing that I actually do want to talk about is the same thing I've been talking about for forever. I want new stages. One of Power Rangers' biggest problems, I think, is that a lot of the stages, because they don't really have a lot going on in them and because of like the color choices, the stages look bland. <clears throat> so, you know, it kind of, you know, it makes the game a little bit stale. And I, with other awesome stages like Corinth and the SPD like training center, which is actually my favorite stage where they're more, you know, vibrant, the colors, you have stuff going on in the background. It's really cool. And I'd like more stages like that. When you look at some of the stages, like we already have training stage, training stage is boring, you know, because it's training stage. Um, you have got the Cenozoic era and you have two stages that are literally the same. It's like you have Cenozoic era and then you have Cenozoic era tower. They're literally the exact same stage, except one has a tower and then one doesn't. That's boring. You could literally take out one stage and like leave the other one and it does more for it than, you know, having the other stages in there. And then you have Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair is, is boring. It's a cave. Um that has a couple weapons. So I think it's just cool that like it has broken ranger weapons in it, but they just there's not enough going on, you know, in the stage. So it's it's boring. And when you compare that to the Mystic Forest, which has a little bit more going on for it and has similar colors, it's a little bit more vibrant. It's just like 
I just want more like lively like looking stages. If I could get like one stage per season, that'd be fantastic. Especially because I think they do such a good job of like, you know, integrating like Power Rangers lore into these characters in addition to giving them like fun move sets and stuff like that. I think it would be really cool if they could, you know, get some extra stages in there. Uh, after watching the Disney Brains video of In Space, one stage I would love is if they put in the congregation of all the big bads, like In Space. That'd be fan fantastic. It's like you have like all the mooks in the background, like, you know, booing you and stuff like that while you're fighting. You're fighting like on top of the table where Andros was fighting like goons or whatever. You could have Dark Spectre make appearances in the background doing like Dark Spectre things and whatnot. I think that'd be a fantastic stage and it honestly would be the stage that I want because we don't have like a space looking stage yet. Another neat thing they could do is uh, the the Samurai Rangers base where they do training. Like, you know, it's it's very like, you know, traditional like Japanese like looking and they could put the soundtrack that they used for Lauren's trailer in there but turn it into a full soundtrack. Those would be some awesome stages. So me personally, I will always say that the main thing that I want until I get more stages is I want more stages in the game. And those would be a couple of examples of stages that I would want. Shows off the Power Rangers lore, look cool, has more stuff going in there. You could take out Training Stage, Dragon's Cave, and Cenozoic Era, replace them with something else, something like that. All right, that's my rant on uh, stages. Let's go ahead and move into the next thing Let's talk about costumes. I was going to talk about like online training mode, but I want to talk about costumes first because talking about costumes should actually be, you know, pretty quick. Um, one thing that people have been asking for a lot is uh, new costumes or color palettes because a lot of the colors look very samey and the more ways you have to express yourself in fighting video games, the better. Do I personally care about extra color palettes? Not really, but um, I think extra costumes would be nice. When you look at the entire cast, you have maybe like three, no, four characters, sorry, that have different costumes. You have Daishi in his uh, Phantom Beast skin, Tommy has two skins, Kimmy has her Mighty Morphin skin, and then Draken, which is of course another Tommy, has his story skin. And, and then Jason has his, his Dragon Shield skin. But outside of that, there really isn't a whole lot of extra variety in the game as far as like, you know, you know, character costumes. So I think character costumes would be nice. Do I care if they if they, you know, add more costumes or colors? Not not really, but it would be nice. If Jason, and I guarantee everybody would, if Jason had that Omega Ranger skin, man, like I don't know, I might have to become a Jason main of that because that Omega Ranger skin looks so awesome. Tommy's black Dino Thunder skin, even though Tommy already has a million skins or whatever like that, that black Dino Thunder skin would be so sick. And like, let's take another instance, like Movie Blue. There's no reason why Movie Blue can't be Movie Black, Movie Red, Movie Yellow, so on and so forth. So I say all that to say that extra character skins would be nice. All right, let's move into online training mode. So, as far as online training mode is concerned, I think online training mode would be nice. It's something that the community has been talking about for a little bit, like, you know, putting in online training so that they can go and do combos or setups with their buddies and maybe get some advice from their friends while they're actually doing it, like, in real time. Would that be nice? Yeah, I think it would be nice. Do I care whether they put it in there? Me personally, not really, because here's, here's the thing. Like, a lot of fighting video games don't really have online training modes. The biggest comparison I make between Power Rangers is to Skullgirls, because they're basically both Marvel 3 clones in some capacity. Now, Skullgirls has a very extensive training mode, and they also have online training mode. But outside of Skullgirls, there are not really a lot of mainstream fighting games that actually have an online training mode. You have um, Skullgirls, but like, I don't think Mortal Kombat has an online training mode. I don't think Street Fighter has an online training mode. I don't think Tekken does. I don't think Soul Calibur does. You guys kind of, you guys kind of get the, you guys kind of get the point, right? Um, outside of, it would be a nice thing that kind of sets Power Rangers apart, but it's not something that a lot of games, you know, really have. And me personally, I think a lot of training really just goes on on your own time. Would it be ha nice to have someone giving you advice in real time while watching you? Yeah, it certainly would. But I think a lot of the setups, a lot of the movement, a lot of the combos, that's kind of stuff that happens on your own time. So would the online training mode be nice? Yeah, I think it would be nice. But um, I personally don't care if they actually put it in there. Do I think that they will for season four? It'd be a nice surprise, but I don't really see that happening. 
All right, now let's go ahead and move into characters. Now, as I mentioned before, there's only one real character that I really, really, really want to talk about, but I'll go ahead and mention the other two characters that I would want, and those would be Trent, of course. Trent was the most, I think he was the most popular character in the community poll or whatever as far as like who people want. Um, I honestly don't know how he would play, but I kind of agree with that. Like Trent's character design just looks too, just looks too cool. And I just, I want that design in the game. I have no idea how he would play. I don't care how he would play. I have all the confidence that they would make him unique and cool looking and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really want to talk about Trent. I think he's a lock for season four. If he is not in season four slash is not the first character that they actually announced for season four, then I, I kind of don't really know like what they're doing. I think that he needs to kind of be in the game at, at this point. Now, the next character that I do want to talk about is, uh, Ninja Adam specifically. Um... We don't have a ninja character in the game as far as like a character that does ninja style stuff, traditional ninja style stuff. So like your Azuna drops and your ninja slides and your ninja teleports and whatnot. The reason why I specifically want Adam as the, the ninja ranger to be the character that they pick is so is strictly because of the way that he looks. There is no character in Power Rangers that has an appearance like any of the ninja rangers in their ninja costumes, right? And with Scorpina, I, I think that they've made it clear that in their own style, they can make a character that has like a nice human face, you know, Scorpina, she, she looks good. She, her, her express, her facial expressions are good. And even though Adam would be wearing a mask, I think as far as like, you know, facial model, character model, I think they would do a fantastic job with him. He wouldn't look like any other character like in the game, which kind of just, you know, speaks to the uniqueness of, of care of the characters and stuff like that. So go ahead and give me Ninja Adam. They could make cool references to like Naru, Naruto or whatever, where like for summoning jutsu, you know, where Naruto like learns how to call the frog. You could have Adam call the um the ninja frog Zord and and do something. You could have like Rasengan references or like the the lightning thing that Kakashi Sensei does, which that might be um that might be Rasengan. I don't know. I'm not really a Naruto person, but you Naruto people you know what I'm talking about. They can do that kind of stuff, so I think that Adam would be an awesome choice. He's in Legacy Wars, so it'd be an easy transition, I would imagine. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about Ninja Adam. Now, the main character that I do wanna talk about, and you guys may know who this character is because I talked about it in season three, and that is Rancic. I really, really want Rancic to be in the game, especially after watching the Disney Brains review of um, Power Rangers uh, uh, Time Force, where he talked about Rancic. Not only is Rancic like, you know, a, a big bad um, and stuff like that, but I think he's a really interesting character because like, despite how evil he is and despite how much of a big bad he is, I think it's a, it was an, ex an interesting layer of complexity to have his role as a father take precedence over everything uh, that, it do that it does. That he does, which ultimately leads to like you know his you know character arc change and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but the reason why I wanted to put Rancic in the game is because in in combination with like you know unique character play styles, when I think of Rancic, uh, the one thing that the Disney Brain mentioned about Rancic is the way that Rancic got his powers was he consulted like some gods or something like that, and the gods gave him this serum, the serum that um, that not only does he need it to like kind of survive, I believe, and live because of how mutated he is, but it also gives him like you know his you know his you know his power and stuff like that. So the first thing that I thought of with this character was Bane from Injustice 1 and Injustice 2. It'd be really cool to have a character that has a gimmick where he has to take his serum and you can stack the serum X amount of times to give him character buffs. Bane, whenever you use his trade, he gains armor and he deals extra damage and you can stack the trade. But the trade-off is that, you know, he goes into a cooldown period, his withdrawal, where depending on how much of the trade that you use for however much time, he will go into a cooldown period where he takes more damage and he does less damage in his combos, and I really feel like this is something that would translate very well to Rancic. Another reason why is because, you know, people are commenting that 
you know, there isn't a traditional grappler in the game. They don't think that Trini really counts as a grappler, even though she's supposed to be the grappler character. So adding another grappler character and giving them more grappler characteristics like Brancic would be a very cool idea. <clears throat> another thing they could do to, you know, emphasize the use of his trait is like in KOF games and Mortal Kombat games, like you can actually combo into command grabs and stuff like in your combos, like if the opponent is in the air and whatnot. <clears throat> and I would take up an, an extra extra page from this and depending on how much you stack your trait you can do chain grabs so you can like do you know x amount of grabs together um for you Skullgirls fans out there this is very similar to beowulf and how his taunt works beowulf can stack his taunt up to three times and if he does that whenever you do his level three super you get x amount of grabs and it also amplifies one of his level one grabs as well i think this would be another neat added gameplay mechanic for rancic where when you stack his trait you can get chain grabs and to help extend like you know his combos um and stuff like that um so yes i would love for them to put rancic in the game give him bane's gimmick make him a, a true a truer grappler you know than trini put the command like the chain grabs in there i think it'd be a fantastic very interesting unique play style for power rangers and that is pretty much going to do it for all of the characters. The next thing that I want to talk about is character balance. One thing that I will always applaud uh, Power Rangers for up to this point is the fact that they always give new changes time to fester before they actually start going off <coughs> after characters. They did this with uh, the Megazords, you know, which they eventually nerfed in this season, and I think they're actually properly balanced now. I don't think they need any changes from here as far as like how the actual mechanic works. Maybe the specific Zords themselves might, you know, need a change here and there over time. But as far as like, you know, how much Megazord time you have, I think they've reached a good balance with it. <clears throat> That being said, like, you know, now that the screen size has had time to fester, I think now is the time to, you know, actually start going after characters and making some changes. Now, the characters that I mostly want to talk about, a lot of the characters I feel after playing, I really don't feel like they, that their place on the tier list or how good they are of a character has changed um, with the increase in screen skies. A lot of the really good characters still get really good corner car carry, they can still do big damage, they can still get good combo extensions, all of that kind of stuff. The only character who I truthfully, truthfully feel who really got hurt by this change is Movie Blue. Movie Blue, it's very apparent that Movie Blue came out in the before time with the way that his combos work. He does not get the same extensions that other characters do. His damage is not as good because he needs to invest a lot of his uh, mid-screen options into just getting you towards the corner because the corner is the only place where Movie Blue can actually get good damage and actually get some setups. Because of one of his hard knockdown moves, his medium auto combo pushes you so far away he can't OTG with Cinnabolt, so he can't get those extensions um, and whatnot. So... It's very unfortunate for Movie Blue because he just became a real boy before they increased the screen size and everything, and then they increased the screen size, and now he is. It just it just kind of hurts him because he just doesn't get those extensions and that that you know some other characters do. That being said, though, Movie Blue is who he is. I really don't feel like there's anything else they can do for Movie Blue without just completely reworking the character, which I don't want them to do. I think he's he's fine. His gameplay is interesting, and I think the way that he works is, is fine. Not every character needs to be, like, top tier or, you know, any kind of thing like that. But the, there is one change I do want them to make for Movie Blue, and that is the way his super works. I'm sure you Movie Blue players know out there that if you do, like, a super mid-screen or full screen or something like that, if it does not put you in the corner... You know, by time you, but you know, by time like maybe like the first hit happens or something like that, Movie Blue will at the end of the super cross up and land at the opponent's head, which means that he can't get an OTG state to continue combos. If there is some way that the developers could make it so that Movie Blue, after landing super, consistently lands at the opponent's feet, so you could properly get an OTG Seno Bolt. That would be fantastic for Movie Blue. One other consideration I would make is for medium auto combo, if it didn't push them so far away, like full screen, so that he could get that OTG Sentinel Bolt, I think that would also really help him out as well. I don't care if they do that part, but at least make that change for Super. That would make the character so much better than he is. Would he still be one of the worst characters in the game? Probably. But it'd be just another thing to make him a more consistent, well-rounded, solid character. The other thing I would do for Movie Blue is extend the range, the, vert the horizontal hitbox specifically of his EX. When you look at RJ's EX and you look at Movie Blue's EX, they're literally the exact same. The only difference is 
RJ's literally goes like half the screen while Movie Blues barely goes in front of his hands. And I think that's a little unfair. So I think they need to extend the hitbox of his EX to where the lightning is whenever he does it, which isn't super far, but it just makes it a little bit better of an EX move where your opponent doesn't have to be like right in your face in order to do it. So those would be the changes that I would make for Movie Blue. You know, after thinking about it a little bit more, there actually is one more change I want them to make to Movie Blue's EX. Once again, in comparison to RJ's, Movie Blue's EX is literally the exact same, except it's much, much worse. Make it exactly like RJ's as far as like the other properties. So if he hits you with it, let it cause a crumple state. And then if you want to do the rest of the follow-ups, hit the EX commands, you know, again, and he'll do the rest of the follow-up. The exact same as RJ's. In my opinion, I'm stressing this, in my opinion, this is not fact, I think Movie Blue is one of the worst characters in the game. Give him something and just let's see what happens. If it ends up being too busted for Movie Blue, then they can just revert it to the way that it was, you know, before. But I think giving him something that'll give him an extra extension will help him out a lot. And you know, let's just see what happens. Now, as far as other characters, after playing Kimmy in this game, on this team, I've actually realized Kimmy is, she's kind of bad in some respects. Um, her super is slow, so you can't use it to punish properly. Her EX, when she actually goes into the slide, it doesn't have invincibility, so she doesn't maintain her invincibility through her EX, which is also very unfortunate for her, considering it doesn't really have, like, other properties, like, you know, Daishis, where it goes, like, half screen, and part of it's a low, and, you know, it has armor, and, like, all this other kind of stuff, you know? So, you know give her inven like you know full invincibility on her ex make her speed up her super so she can properly punish things or that she can properly combo into her super you know off of off of things there's no reason for it to be as slow as it is and then one thing i actually realized about kimmy that no other character has is that if you use kimmy's ground bounce um, either from her air heavy or from a second hit of her heavy auto combo and then you try and do the OTG state which gives you a similar ground bounce, she only gets one. She doesn't get both. She only gets one or the other. And that's just kind of unfair. Now, the thing that makes up a lot of this for Kimmy is the fact that she has one of the best normals in the game in the crouching medium and the fact that she's such a neutral monster. But her damage sucks. Her super is slow. Her EX doesn't have proper invincibility and she only gets one ground bounce or the OTG state, not like not one of each. She gets one of the other. If you try to do the other thing, like the OTG state after the ground bounce, it doesn't work. And that makes absolutely no sense. So give Kimmy those, those things she kind of needs those things just to be on par with what other characters have now the only the other change that i would make in the game would be basically to the season three characters i think they should rename season three season s just because of how super powerful these characters are you have scorpina who can kill people in one bar you have lauren who can kill people for one bar you have rj who just does a lot of things that completely ignore like what power rangers does between his double hitting light between his whiff canceling auto combos three overheads his knee drop which can randomly cross up at times and stuff like that among other things on top of still having stupid damage after the damage nerf nerf these characters man nerf these characters not horribly though i think rj definitely needs the damage nerf um i think for lauren what it mostly comes down to her is her flame carpet i think i feel like her flame carpet just kind of like ignores damage scaling or something like that like you know put damage scaling on the flame carpet when she does it in the middle of combos i think that'd make her just fine as far as scorpina goes scorpina i would make two changes to scorpina scorpina's damage is really dumb but i think it's because of the way her poison works i think her poison does too much damage like it doesn't matter that's potential damage I, I feel like it does it does too much damage it, and it makes her combos dumb where you can just like kill people for like one one bar i feel like that should not be a thing i don't think virgil ranger being able to kill people for two bars should be a thing but that just reinforces the point that being able to kill somebody for one bar should not be a, a thing i think they need to either nerf her poison damage or they need to introduce some kind of damage scaling whenever you use her uh scorpion her nox mine in the middle of combos it needs to be some kind of damage scaling just to like balance that out like you know you can give her like her crazy combos or whatever you want to do like you know that's fine but make an adjustment to the poison damage either just decrease the poison damage or introduce damage scaling in the middle of combos same thing for lauren introduce damage scaling or decrease the damage of flame carpet and i think those characters will be just fine the one other change i would actually make for scorpina is to her crouching medium 
Scorpina has some of the worst medium buttons uh, in this game. She has a slow standing medium. Her crouching medium it has pathetic range. It's super, super stubby. And I would give her the Movie Blue treatment. Movie Blue's biggest change, which he desperately needed, was whenever he does block, whenever he does like moves, he advances forward properly so they actually connect in block strings. I think Scorpina could really, really use that. Scorpina has absolutely no options when she is uh, up close. Um, she has her standing, her crouching line, which is a fantastic button, but because of how stubby her medium is, it doesn't really, you know, chain properly i can't tell you how, how many times i've gone for like like cross up um heavy and because i do the light if i try to do the medium the medium width because it doesn't it doesn't advance her forward i think she needs the exact same thing she needs the ability to advance forward with her crouching medium button you can keep her standing medium the way it is it's fine um because you know you can you only use it for combo filler anyway and that hasn't been a problem but yeah let her move forward a little bit with the crouching medium so that she has more consistent pressure, more consistent combos, and I think that's the only thing that she needs in addition to just, like, you know, figuring out some way to nerf the poison damage when she does combos and stuff like that. And that's pretty much going to cover the character balance. So, we talked about costumes, we talked about stages, we talked about characters, and we talked about character balance. And we talked about online training mode. And I think with that, that will end this discussion of Season 4. So, let me know what you guys think. If the matches aren't over at this particular point, then I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the matches. But let me know your opinions. Are you looking forward to Season 4? Do you think there will be a Season 4? What characters do you want? What features do you want? How do you want the characters to change? I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. And I'll be back at you later with future videos. This is Parker Lad, and I will see you guys next time. I really don't understand that. That's why we don't do two airlight mediums. Cause I, like I said, if I know one thing, it's a happy birthday. <laughs> also, happy birthday. <laughs> there we go. Uh. Like that's so. That's so weird. Coming from other tag fighters, that, that's just so. That's so weird. <laughs> like it's just like, oh, nope, nope, you're in there. <laughs> It can happen in Marvel.